Okay, we're going to do some data mining from the Goddard Institute for Space Studies. Um, if you Google NASA GISS, um, it'll bring you to this page. Go to the data sets, and we're looking for the surface temperature model. Um, the global map is what we're looking for, so just click here, and it brings you to the form. So we're going to go through a couple of examples here. Um, the data sources are updated constantly as uh, the data improves. You can use the defaults that are here. We're not going to use uh, remote sensed surface temperature anomaly data, so you can just leave that blank. We do want to calculate anomalies. What does that mean? It means that we're going to use two periods of time and we're going to calculate the change in surface temperature um, between those two periods of time. So what you're going to be mapping isn't surface temperature, it's the change in surface temperature over time. So what you're going to be mapping is the increase or decrease in global surface temperatures. It's the change. That's really important. Make sure that's very clear on your maps. Convince us that you understand um, that this is what you're mapping, is a change. Okay, mean period. Play with this a little bit. Um, you can choose to... Um, you know, calculate your surface temperatures over a period of time, a calendar year. Um, it's standard practice to use a meteorological year or season. I'm going to show a full year, December all the way to November. You can choose to just map winter temperatures, summer temperatures, etc. So um, you can also just choose December or something like that. But again, this has to be displayed on your map. Um, you need to discuss this. This is really going to impact um, what your model produces. Okay, time intervals. This again is really important. You need to produce at least two data sets. So you're going to fill out this form and make two different data sets. Um, the, the base period is the earlier period of time that you're going to compare against. The data goes back to 1881. That's our earliest period of record um, and goes all the way up to uh, 2020. Um, for getting started, let's start with 1901 to, um, well, let's just go for a full 100-year period. This means that they're going to take all of the surface temperature data that they have in their record um, and average for the whole globe. They're going to average surface temperatures for this 100-year period of time. And what we're going to do is compare this period of time against um, a specific period of time. And let's, let's just choose like a 30-year period. Um, well, let's, let's just, yeah, let's do a 30-year period here. So what, what's going to happen is we're going to calculate an average over this more contemporary period of time. And then we're going to subtract these averages against um, a base period that's much bigger um, and includes the whole period of record that we basically have you know for, for the last hundred years does that make sense hopefully it does um, you can leave the smoothing radius and the map projection but let's just take a look at what happens it does take a few seconds to generate the data but what it's going to do is is create a map for us and so what this is showing is Here's your legend down here. So it's a divergent color ramp with the warm colors are warming and the cool colors are cooling. And it's saying that for a period of time, 1981 to 2010, this 30 year period, um, if we take that average for surface temperatures and subtract the average over a 100 year period of time, we see slight warming pretty much everywhere with little pockets of cooling. Um, it also generates a map for us, or I mean a, a graph. So by latitude, um, you can see here this is warming. So it's basically saying that everywhere um, from north to south, from pole to pole, we are seeing some level of warming um, on average. But what does this mean? This is a huge period of time, and any warming that we might be seeing in more recent years is going to be, that curve is going to be flattened by taking such a large base period of time and even such a large earlier period of time. What if we changed this and used very 
um, industry standard 30 year periods of record, um, we could change this one to um, like maybe 1921 to 1950. And we'll change this one to 1991 to 2020. So comparing an earlier period of time, 30 year period to a uh, even more contemporary 30 year period of time, but still averaging all of the years between 1991 and 1920, or sorry, 2020. So you can see there's a big difference. The overall global increase is 0.72 degrees centigrade or Celsius. This is showing the anomaly 1991 to 2020 against a baseline period of 1921 to 1950. So this is the change in temperature over that period of time. And you can see that our um, values have changed down here. We um, have a much oranger, much warmer map. Little pockets of cooling. Um, gray is no data. And again, we can look at our chart. It's quite a difference. Okay. What if we, um, what, what does this mean to average over a 30 year period of time? It means that we are flattening that curve. So what if we were to um, shorten this period of time, make this 2001, for example, and make it a 20 year period of time? You're gonna see this number increasing. What we're doing is instead of flattening the curve, we're, we're allowing, um, what we know these later, these later years um, have seen much more warming than the earlier years. And so um, we're allowing these to reflect a little bit more on our final map. I'm gonna keep um, doing that. So watch what's going on, in, especially at the North in the Arctic. Now we're just gonna use a 10 year period of time against that same earlier baseline period. And you can see that the global um, temperature is increasing even more. That's because of this period of time that we're averaging over. So if I keep reducing the period of time, now I'll do a five year period. We should see this number increase even more because the most recent five years did see the most warming we're seeing an uptick in warming each year. Each, each year is a little bit warmer than the year before. So now we've seen between these two periods of time, we've seen um, over a degree Celsius global average increase. Um, and then we can take this all the way to the most recent year and just compare the year 2020 against this baseline period and you can see there's quite an increase in temperature globally. So you can play with this. You know, maybe you don't want to go that far back. You could go 1950 to 1980. So this is going to this is all going to impact the kind of story that you tell with your data. If you want to take on the role of um, you know, a climate scientist who's just telling it as it is, be very cognizant of the periods of time that you're putting in here. Um, for a base period, you do want to have some kind of a, a period of time that, the, that you're averaging over, but maybe it's fair to compare 10 years to 10 years. Um, you know, what's the most uh, transparent way to show that the, that the globe is actually warming? Um, if you want to take the stance of a climate denier, you might want to obfuscate. You might want to hide the periods of time. You might want to choose a really large time period that you're averaging over because it's going to help squash the more recent warming trends that we've seen. So you can use this data to tell a whole bunch of different stories. Um, what I want you to do is to be very deliberate about your cartographic choices. Be very transparent about this. You have to include this information on your map. You can't just lie about the time periods that you're presenting, but you can downplay them or play them up or be very transparent about them um, in different ways, to, using you know different text hierarchy, placement on the page, etc. Um, so what you're going to do to download this data is you're going to um, download NetCDF gridded data so that you have rasters to work with.
Okay, so you're going to click on this. Now the thing to know is you're going to do this twice and uh, like I say in the instructions, it's going to come out and just be, um, you're going to get a file name that's the exact same each time you run this. Your, your periods of record won't be reflected in the file name. So you're, when you download this, you're going to want to make sure you go in and label and rename these data files right away so you can keep uh, track of the differences. So set up your, your form the way you want. You can experiment with a little bit and get a glimpse of what your map may look like. Uh, make sure you're taking note of that and then go ahead and download the data by clicking on the NetCDF file. All right, that's it.